We're at Cover Your Acres in Oberlin, Kansas, talking now with Dallas Peterson, who is weed specialist, K-State Research and Extension. And uh, weed control is one of those things that we're always looking to find answers, and, and you're looking at some of those environmental impacts of, uh, of using uh, uh, some of the herbicides and so on. So uh, tell us about what you're sharing with farmers. Well, when glyphosate was still working well, it wasn't that big a deal, really, because it was fair, fairly fail-proof, it seemed like. But now that we have developed uh, several different glyphosate-resistant weeds, we have to look at going back and using some of our uh, soil-applied herbicides and other post-emergence herbicides, and the environmental effects certainly are more important with those. Uh, with soil-applied herbicides, things like soil pH, uh, organic matter, soil texture, can influence those, but probably the most important factor is uh, an activating rainfall to get them in solution so they can be absorbed by that germinating seedling. With post-emergence treatments, of course, temperature, humidity, uh, growth stage, uh, all of those are also very important. We also need to make sure that we, we apply the herbicide in the proper manner using uh, uh, proper techniques to get good spray coverage, using the, the recommended adjuvants and those things just to optimize uh, control. As we look at, uh, at all these, are, are there some other things that uh, producers need to make sure they're aware of? I mean, it's, it's obvious, uh, not only checking the weather, but uh, timeliness of, uh, of application, I would think, would be one of those huge keys. Yeah, certainly, especially from a post-emergence standpoint, timeliness probably overrides some of the environmental factors, because if, if you can get in there and make that application when those weeds are small and actively growing, uh, they are more susceptible. Plus, in most cases, you, you already have better environmental conditions than if you wait until later in the growing season. So timeliness is uh, probably the, the number one factor for the post-emergence herbicides. Glyphosate resistance is becoming, uh, I, I guess, that day has arrived and continues uh, uh, every year. We, we find more weeds that, uh, you know, are, are finally finding that tolerance to it. Uh, are we, are we going to find that uh, maybe that, that, next great, uh, uh, that next great scape, if you will? Well, we're always looking for new herbicides and new herbicide modes of action. To be honest with you, there aren't very many new ones on the horizon, as far as we can tell. There are some new technologies coming along in certain crops, uh, most notably in soybeans with the dicamba-resistant soybeans and the 2,4-D-resistant soybeans. Uh, so those are new tools that will provide some new options to us. But really, you know, we got to where we're at because uh, we utilize one uh, method of control too intensively. And again, glyphosate uh, worked well. It was fairly inexpensive. And so we utilized it uh, with, in many cases. Uh, and, and excluded some of the other uh, herbicides and practices. So we really just need to focus on using a more diversified weed control approach. Dallas and Peterson, more weed uh, specialist with K-State Research and Extension. On the road in Oberlin at Cover Your Acres for AgView, I'm Ken Rogers.